You're watching Kenosha Community Media. Welcome to Medicare. My name is Janice Erickson. I'm the Kenosha County Benefit Specialist for older adults. I work with those who are 60 and over. Um, I work at the Aging and Disability Resource Center, which is located at the Old Market Square, 8600 Sheridan Road. Uh, that's kind of a one-stop shop office for persons with disabilities or seniors who may need in-home services. A lot of good programs are located there. In your folder, there is on the left-hand side a flyer that tells you about the Aging and Disability Resource Center, or what, what we call ADRC, um, the phone number, and so you're welcome to come and visit or stop there if you have any questions or problems after today's workshop. I'm also considered a SHIP counselor, and that stands for State Health Insurance Assistance Program. If you were to contact Medicare and whatever your issue happened to be, if they felt that you would do good to meet with someone, they would probably refer you to our office. But we're going to be covering all the parts of Medicare, the A, B, C's, and D's, as we say. Uh, you'll learn about original Medicare Part A, which is your hospital insurance. That covers you if you're an inpatient in a hospital, if you need nursing home care after a hospital stay. It covers you for care at home that you might need, skilled care and therapy services at home. And it also offers hospice benefits. If there's a terminal illness present, um, there's hospice benefits involved with Medicare Part A. Um, also, you'll learn about Original Medicare Part B, and we call it Original Medicare because of the private insurance that's available as an option to Original Medicare, which you'll also learn about. But Original Medicare Part B, that's your medical insurance. That covers you for physicians' tests, lab work, all the um, tests that the doctor might order, uh, wheelchairs, uh, medical equipment that you might need. Uh, there's a lot of good preventive services that are covered by Medicare Part B and we'll point out a few of those too. Um, I'm also going to uh, show you about Medicare Part C, or what is called Medicare Advantage, sometimes called Medicare Health Plans, and that's the private insurance that you can choose to go into for your hospital and doctor coverage rather than original Medicare Part A and B, so you have Part C. Um, and then Part D is the uh, drug plans that are available, that's private insurance that contracts with Medicare to cover seniors for their prescriptions. So we'll also show you how that works and what your options are for that. Um, I always start out by talking about the Affordable Care Act because there's a lot of confusion with seniors particularly that they feel they must go into the marketplace or the health reform law for their uh, health insurance. And w the f best message we can give seniors is that you have Medicare, so you have health insurance. The Affordable Care Act, or what some people call Obamacare, is for people who don't have health insurance at all. So if you have family or friends or neighbors who need health insurance, uh, there's a marketplace where you can go to. Um, there's helpers in our area, and um, people who need health insurance can go to this spot. But people on Medicare do not shop at the, at the mar what we call the, medic the marketplace. So there's a few terms I'm going to go over. Um, these are words that I'll be using throughout the workshop, and it kind of familiarizes you with, uh, right up front, what some of the terms are I'm talking about. Uh, there is a list on the left side of your folder, glossary of Medicare-related terms, so you'll be able to take that home with you, and then you'll know those terms after you leave today. Uh, but an important term to start out with is a Medicare assignment agreement. Just what is that? That's when your provider of services agree to accept what Medicare approves for the charge. Um, usually when, when the provider bills Medicare, they bill slightly more than what Medicare approves. And when there's an, an assignment agreement, they actually make an adjustment to the bill so that you end up with less out-of-pocket costs. So that's a good thing. And most of the providers in this area do accept Medicare assignment. Uh, there are deductibles and there's co-payments or co-insurance under most all the parts of Medicare. A deductible, as you know, is something that you have to pay up front. Uh, the difference between a co-payment or a co-insurance, they're kind of flip-flop the same terms, but a co-payment is like a fixed amount of a charge, maybe $5 for a, a generic medication or maybe $15 for a doctor visit, where a co-insurance is a percent of the total charge. An example is under Part B, you pay 20% co-insurance of your medical services or your doctor services. So you'll see how that works. 
Uh, creditable coverage and premium penalty. Those are terms I like to introduce you to because it's important to know that there are penalties under Medicare if you don't sign up when you're first eligible and you don't have some other kind of coverage such as being employed with coverage or retired with good drug coverage from your company, uh, you could be penalized if you don't take Medicare uh, when you're first eligible. And we are going to touch on that a bit more. Uh, there's different enrollment periods we're going to be going over when you can sign up for Medicare when you first turn 65, when you can change your insurance during the year. Um, so we'll, sh we'll show you all the different times you get enrolled in Medicare and when you can change your coverage if you wish to. Uh, there's some programs I'll talk about at the end. Wisconsin Senior Care is a prescription program that works very well for some seniors for their prescriptions. There's an extra help program that goes along with Part D that helps lower the cost of the prescriptions. We'll talk about that eligibility. Um, also, you'll see me talk a little bit about Medicaid or Title 19. Um, that's uh, health insurance for people who have limited income and limited resources. So we'll touch on some of those benefits. So, hello Medicare. Medicare is federal health insurance that's been around since 1965. You're eligible for Medicare at age 65, even if you wait to retire. If you or your spouse continue to work after age 65, you can decide whether or not you're going to continue to, you're going to have Medicare or whether you'd like to wait until you retire. Uh, also, person who, persons who are under age 65 with certain disabilities qualify for Medicare. Um, in order to get Medicare, you must be eligible for Social Security benefits. You have to be able to have pay, paid and worked for a number of years into the Social Security uh, fund with either through your own work, work, work record or a spouse's um, in order to qualify for Social Security income. And then along with that, at age 65, you get Medicare. So you'll be choosing from the ABCs and Ds of Medicare. How do you want to get your health coverage? That's what you're going to learn today. Um, it's administered at the federal level by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That's the federal agency that administers Medicare. And you'll see the CMS on a lot of your materials when you get information for Medicare. It should say CMS or the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. So the questions become, when can you get Medicare and how do you get it? You'll be auto-enrolled in Medicare if you're drawing Social Security prior to age 65. Say you're a widow, or maybe you take early retirement at 62 or 63. When you come up to age 65, you're going to be automatically enrolled into Medicare. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. Um, you'll receive your Medicare card in the mail. Um, the only time you might want to consider is if you or your spouse are continuing to work past age 65, you can decide to defer taking Part B, particularly because there's a, a premium with Part B. So um, it could serve as a secondary insurance if you want that, but it, that's one case where you can defer taking Medicare Part B as long as you're working and you're fully employed or your spouse is and you're covered by their insurance. Um, but otherwise, they'll mail the card to you and there's instructions in there what to do if you're going to just have, start take, using Medicare as a secondary insurance or if you're already retired and you want that as your primary insurance, it'll instruct you what your options are. And if you're going to pick a Medicare Part C plan, the Medicare Advantage, or if you want the Medicare drug coverage, you have to pick a plan and enroll at that time. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, there's also an initial enrollment period. Now, this is for someone who isn't getting their early retirement, right, or their widow's benefits or their disability benefits. They're coming up to age 65. There's a seven-month window when you can sign up for Medicare. Three months prior, the month of, and up to three months after, that you can contact the Social Security office or go online and sign up for Medicare. Um, there, you won't be penalized during that period, and you won't be, of course, you won't be denied health insurance. If you're going to get a Medicare supplement policy, you can't be denied. Uh, and if you're going to pick a Part D plan or a Medicare Advantage plan, you can make those choices during that period. That's your initial enrollment period that's coming up to your 65th birthday. <clears throat> There's also a general enrollment period and special enrollment, for, particularly for Part B, because this is when people decide not to take Medicare Part B because they're still working. Um, you, can in, you can sign up any time if you want to, or once you retire, you have eight months to sign up. That's a special enrollment period. Also, if you didn't sign up for Part B at age 65 and you weren't employed, but you just didn't want to take that insurance, we don't recommend that, but you can still enroll each year during a general enrollment period. 
that runs from January to March of each year, and then your benefits begin July 1st. So these are times when you can mostly sign up for Part A and B, the initial enrollment period or general enrollment or special enrollments when you retire. I talk about working after Medicare eligibility because with the economy these days, the last few years, a lot of people continue to work past age 65. Um, if you or your spouse do continue to work past your Medicare eligibility, you can make a decision whether you want to have Medicare as a secondary insurance or whether you want to wait to sign up for it till you retire, till your spouse retires. Um, some people decide not to take Part B because that's where that premium is. It's $104 a month that you would be paying for Part B, and whether it's going to pay any of your bills depends on how good your employer insurance is. So it's something to consider if you do cons uh, work past Medicare eligibility. Um, if you wait to, re to take Medicare when you retire, you have that eight-month window, your special enrollment period, to sign up with no penalty. But if you wait longer than that, then you could start being penalized depending on the number of months or years that you go without coverage. So this is the Medicare card that you receive in the mail if you're already getting Social Security benefits prior to age 65 or when you would sign up in that seven month window of your 65th birthday. Um, and I like to point out a couple things about this card because uh, it's confusing somewhat. Um, this Medicare claim number, that's going to be your Social Security number if you're drawing Medicare on your own work record. Um, and the A tells me that that person is the primary person. They're the ones who worked and paid into Social Security, so they get their Medicare, and that would be their Social Security number. So that's the, num the uh, number, the Medicare claim number is what your provider is going to need in order to bill original Medicare. Um, that's different than where here it says on this card, hospital insurance part A and medical insurance part B. Different letters, and they mean different things. This person has hospital insurance and medical insurance, and it tells you when it's effective, which is generally the first of the month of your 65th birthday. So even if your birthday was July 15th or July 31st, your Medicare would be effective July 1st. So That's the card that you want to keep secure. You don't want to just be uh, carrying that with you all the time. You need to provide, it to provide it to your hospital and doctor when you become eligible, but otherwise it's something you definitely want to keep secure because this is your private information and you don't want to be a victim of identity theft or any scams. So decisions, decisions. What are you going to do for your health care now that you're coming up to Medicare? Um, are you going to go with traditional or original Medicare? Um, a and B. That's, some people decide that's all they're going to have for their health insurance. Uh, or you may decide you want to pick up a Medicare supplement or what we call Medigap policy, and I'm going to talk more detail about that. But that's insurance that's designed to go along with original Medicare to help pay those out-of-pocket costs, the deductibles and the co-pays. Uh, if you have original Medicare and you're fortunate to have a, you retired from a company that offers you some kind of secondary insurance, that's a good thing, and you can stay with that insurance. Uh, if it includes drug coverage, you don't have to think about Part D because you have good drug coverage with your company insurance secondary to Medicare. So that's somewhat of the situation in our area with some companies. Uh, you might find Medicare Advantage is how you want to get your health care. I'm going to teach, you know, tell you more how that works and what that is, but to do that you must pick a plan and sign up with that insurance company. Uh, if you have limited income, limited assets or resources, you might qualify for Medicaid to help pay your medical bills. Some people have both Medicare and Medicaid if they have limited resources. Uh, so another issue is where are you going to get your prescription coverage? You know, there shouldn't be anybody on Medicare who now who goes without prescription coverage somehow. Either a Part D plan, maybe your retiree insurance does offer good prescription coverage. Uh, maybe senior care is going to be a good option for you. I'll tell you about that. Um, I always mention Veterans Administration because uh, veterans who sign up with the VA to get their prescriptions, that's considered credible drug coverage. It's very affordable. It's like seven, eight dollars for each prescription. So some veterans might decide to go to the VA for their prescriptions and you can do that. Then you don't have to sign up for Part D if you don't want to. And you won't be penalized if ever in the future you decided to sign up for Part D for some reason. All right, so let's go on. We're going to talk about coverage and cost for Medicare Part A or hospital insurance. Uh, coverage includes stays in the hospital. 
It includes skilled nursing facility care after a hospital stay, which I'll explain. It includes home health care, care at home, and also hospice care if there's a terminal illness present. The cost of Part A for most everyone is no monthly premium. Because you've worked and paid into Social Security for the required number of years and you have your Social Security benefits, Medicare Part A is premium free for most everyone. Um, there are a few people who do pay a premium if they're just short those quarters of work. Uh, you can still get Medicare and pay a premium. But most everyone we come across gets Medicare Part A premium free. How it covers you in an inpatient, in the hospital. Um, there is an upfront deductible of $1,216, and that's for 2014. These, co these deductibles change a little bit each year. Um, that you would be responsible to pay of your hospital stay. If you're there for three weeks or 10 days, however long, your responsibility for that hospital bill would be the Part A deductible of 1,216. What's important to remember about that is it can be incurred more than once per year. It's not an annual deductible. If you go home for 60 days or more and you end up back in the hospital, you're in a new benefit period and that Part A deductible would be applied to your stay again. So that's where a Medicare supplement or secondary insurance from your retiree might help pay that cost. Uh, other uh, costs associated with Part A hospital stays, if you're in a continuous stay in the hospital, maybe in and out of the hospital, back home, you go in the nursing home for some time, back home, back to the hospital, and there's not that 60-day span of no inpatient care, then you're in the same benefit period. And after day 60, co-pays start kicking in, 304 per day. Now, Medicare is still paying your hospital bill, but you're going to be responsible for these numbers in red. So again, that's where a Medicare supplement can step up to help pay those costs. Um, question we always bring up now is, are you an inpatient or an outpatient? Because that's important. This is how Medicare covers you as an inpatient. But if you're um, admitted to the hospital as an outpatient, you might be in a hospital bed and under what they call observation, but not actually inpatient. And why that might be significant is, um, if you go to the nursing home after that hospital stay and you weren't in the, in the hospital for three days or more as an inpatient, you don't have any nursing home benefits available to you. So it's important to ask, am I an inpatient or an outpatient? Um, and your, your hospital bill is still probably going to be covered no matter what because you're required to be there, but it's just a different payment system. And it does pay to ask, especially about your follow-up nursing home care. Um, you'll see when I move to that, in order for Medicare to pay in a skilled nursing facility, you have to be, have been an inpatient in a hospital for three days or more. From there, you can go to a nursing home for follow-up therapy or nursing services. You have up to 100 days of coverage under Medicare. Uh, the first 20 days of your nursing home stay will be paid in full. And from day 21 to 100, if you still receive that skilled care, then there's a copay of $152 per day that you're responsible to pay of your nursing home stay. Now, if you have a secondary insurance, they should pick up that amount. Um, but if not, you'll have to pay that bill. Um, and as long as you receive that daily skilled care, up to 100 days would be covered in that nursing home. Okay. Uh, I always mention at this point about Medicare appeal rights, because you do have rights under Medicare. If you're denied services, um, you should be notified in writing, and you have a right to appeal that. If you believe there's medical evidence that your stay should be covered, uh, and I mention it at this point because this is where we see most of the Medicare appeals is for nursing home stays. Uh, <clears throat> if your doctor agrees and you believe there's medical evidence that Medicare should still be covering your stay, you can request a written notification, and you'll be, and you'll be notified of your appeal rights. Um, and I do talk about this a little bit later on, because this is where a benefit specialist can help, is with the appeals. So two other things under Medicare Part A hospital insurance includes home health care and hospice Medicare. Now I'm probably going to skip over this a little bit, just because, uh, but just so you know, if you need skilled care in your home, Medicare can help cover it. If your doctor orders it, you can get care by the nurse or the therapist in your home. And hospice comes in if there's a terminal illness and a person makes the decision to just go home and be kept comfortable to the end of their days. There are a lot of supportive services and in-home services that can be covered under Medicare in that situation. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. 
Um, coverage for Medicare Part B includes all your medically, medically necessary treatment and supplies for an injur injury or an illness. There are some preventive services that are covered where there isn't an illness present, and I'm going to touch on those. But for most of your Part B medical services, you have to have some kind of injury or illness in order to have Medicare pay for that. <clears throat> it includes physician services, tests, lab work, uh, follow-up therapies. Um, a lot of medical services covered under Part B. This is the short list. Durable medical equipment, things like wheelchairs, walkers, quad canes, hospital beds. The cost of Part B, for most everyone, is $104.90. That usually comes out of your Social Security check automatically. Now, if you're drawing Social Security, that Part B premium will come out automatically. But if you decide you want to pay it, you can arrange that. Um, those who have higher incomes, and this has been in place since approximately 2006, where higher income persons on Medicare pay a higher Part B premium. Uh, if your income is more than $85,000 as an individual or $170,000 as a couple, you will be paying a higher Part B premium, more than that $104. And that information is detailed on a handout I do have here. Um, in your folder is most everything you need, but I do have some additional um, things that I might refer to, and you're welcome to take that if you want to. But there is a breakdown of who pays a higher Part B premium, and Part D, for, in fact, also. Uh, so if you have income more than those amounts, you want to investigate what your Part B premium might be. But most everyone pays $104.90 each month. Um, there's an annual Part B deductible of $147. That's when, you say, I'll give you an example. Say you go to the doctor in January. Uh, Medicare will take off that first $147 of the charges, and then they pay 80% of what they approve above and beyond that and you're responsible for the 20%. So Medicare is an 80-20, just like a lot of other insurances that are out there. But that deductible for Medicare Part B is one time per year. And again, if you have secondary insurance or a supplement, they should be paying, hopefully, the Part B deductible and the 20% co-pays. Um, when you do go to the, provi to the provider services, um, you'll get a Medicare summary notice in the mail. Now, that's true whether you're in original Medicare or whether you're in Medicare Advantage. Um, you should get um, a notice about the services you received, and it tells you how much was approved, how much was paid, how much is your responsibility. So it's something that you definitely want to watch for and know what to look for. Um, tells you the amount you may be billed, tells you the date claim is pr the processed and the date you were at the doctor, so you want to make sure all that information is correct on your notice because um, if someone stole your Medicare number, they could be billing Medicare on your behalf and unbeknownst to you. So something to watch for. Your Medicare summary notice will come in the mail. And that little symbol up there in the corner is the official Medicare notice. So that should be on all your official Medicare notices. A good thing about Medicare is there are preventive benefits. When I mentioned that most Part B services are covered if there's an illness or an injury, this is a short list of preventive benefits that can be covered by Medicare when you don't necessarily have a condition present. Things like mammograms, pap smears, uh, colorectal screening, diabetes screening. Um, in your folder, on the left side, is a handout about your preventive Medicare services. And it tells you what's covered by Medicare for those routine tests um, and how much your cost might be. Some of these services are offered at, uh, covered at 100% by Medicare. No deductible, no coinsurance. So keep that sheet handy, and if you believe you should have some of these tests, talk to your doctor, because they know how to bill Medicare correctly on your behalf. Okay? So that's how Medicare Part B covers your services. The deductible, you pay the monthly premium, you pay that 40, 147 deductible, and then 20%. Now, some people, and I also mentioned about the Part A deductible and the co-payments co associated with Part A hospital stays. Uh, you might decide to take a Medicare supplement or what we call Medigap policy to go along with original Medicare to pay your bills. That's one of your decisions when you're coming up to Medicare eligibility. And in Wisconsin, uh, the policies that are sold, they're called, Medigap is the term, it means Medicare supplement. Uh, but it picks up those gaps in Medicare. That's why it's called Medigap, those deductibles and those copays. So in Wisconsin, 
Um, our state office of the Commissioner of Insurance is who regulates these policies. And they actually publish a book each year, and I brought a couple examples um, of the Medicare Supplement or Medigap policy booklets. So this is what's available online or by calling their office, and the phone number and everything is in your information. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about comparing Medicare supplements. Is that how you want to get your health care? Um, the premium range for a Medicare supplement, and we're still talking 2013 because the booklet should be updated probably uh, the end of February, early March. The insurance companies, um, you know, the book is published for 2014. But right now, we know that at age 65, you can get a Medicare supplement for approximately 130 to 150 a month to pay those deductibles and co-pays. Um, and in your folder, I did give everyone, it's on the right side of your folder, and it's a buff-colored handout, and it lists all the Medicare supplements that are available in Wisconsin. This comes from that yellow book. These are traditional policies, and it tells you what the premium is at age 65 for a male and female. So you have an example and you have the phone numbers to call if you're interested in any one of those as your Medicare supplement. <clears throat> the premiums in Wisconsin, the premiums in Wisconsin um, can be based on your zip code and your age and your gender. The rules in the Affordable Care Act that the policies all have to be the same for males and females. You can't change different policies. Unfortunately, those rules didn't apply to the Medicare supplements. So if you, you'll see on your sheet that I detailed for you the difference between the premiums between a male and a female at age 65 for full coverage of those deductibles and coinsurance. With a Medicare supplement or Medigap, you usually stay with the same insurance. You don't really switch those like you do the drug plans and the Medicare Advantage plans, which you're going to see how those can change year to year. Most people who pick a Medicare supplement stay with that same policy throughout their Medicare years. <clears throat> so I want to help you understand how to shop for these policies, because if you decide that that's how you're going to get your health care, original Medicare and a supplement, understand that in Wisconsin, all the policies offer the same coverage. They offer the basic policy, which includes coverage for all the Medicare copays, the 20% copays for your doctor services and for those hospital services. They're all included in that basic package. And then you pick what optional riders you want. You can pick riders to cover the A and B deductibles, and you can have full coverage. You pay the premium, your bills are going to be covered between Medicare and your supplement. There's also some additional riders that you can, ch that you can decide to take but that's totally up to you, okay? So um, there are some experts at the state of Wisconsin on these Medigap policies. If you want more information or you're considering this, you can um, call an 800 number. There's a state uh, helpline that counselors are available to help you decide which supplement might be right for you. Also, insurance agents sell these policies, so you can contact an agent or a broker, okay? But I did give you that Medigap list for 2013. These are your traditional Medigap policies that go with A and B to pay those deductibles and coinsurance. That sheet shows you the name of the insurance company, the phone number, and it shows you the premium at age 65 for male and female in our zip code, 53140. Okay? But if you want the 2014 rates, you'd have to contact the insurance company because we don't have that information to update yet. Okay, so when can you get a Medicare supplement policy without being denied? You can when you first go on Medicare, your initial enrollment period, remember that seven month window, you can sign up for a Medicare supplement policy and you can't be denied. Uh, if you've had coverage up to your Medicare eligibility, there's no pre-existing condition waiting periods. That pre-existing um, with the Affordable Care Act that insurance can't deny you for pre-existing, that hasn't carried over to the Medicare supplements yet. They can still deny you if you went without coverage prior to Medicare eligibility. <coughs> if you have a lot of health questions uh, or a lot of health issues. <clears throat> if you lose your other insurance, that's when you can get a Medigap policy and not be denied. It's called guarantee issue. I'll give you an example. Say your retiree company, um, your employer, you retired and you had secondary insurance. 
Um, we've seen where the company goes bankrupt and they drop all their Medicare supplements for their retirees. Um, because you lost coverage, you have 63 days from the loss of that insurance to get a Medigap policy and you can't be denied. You can also switch Medicare supplements anytime you want to. If you can find a cheaper one and they'll accept you, they will ask health questions, but if they accept you, you can switch a Medicare supplement uh, anytime during the year. You don't have to do it during certain enrollment periods. Okay? Okay, so Medicare Advantage. This is another way to get your health coverage. It's called Part C, called Medicare Health Plans. That's what you'll see on the Medicare website and on the Medicare materials. It, it's called um, Medicare Health Plans. And this is an all-in-one. And how does that work? Well, this is private insurance that contracts with Medicare, or CMS, to provide you with all your health coverage. These are plans like HMOs and PPOs. Um, and they very often require a network of providers. Uh, it is not a Medigap or supplemental insurance. It is your health care. Okay? You do continue to pay that Part B premium. If you sign up for Medicare Advantage, you're still going to have that $104.90 come out of your check. But, and then if there's any additional plan premium, you have to pay that directly to the plan. And um, we have a scan in an example of the Medicare Advantage plans in your workbook, which I'm going to get to. But the premium range for this year for Medicare Advantage is um, you can get a Medicare Advantage plan for no additional monthly premium or as high as $159. That's kind of the premium range for Medicare Advantage in our area. There are varied co-pays that you're responsible to pay. And you're going to see how that works and what that might be right for you. The plans may be regional. They may only cover you for an emergency outside of your area. Uh, so you really need to find out more details if you're thinking about Medicare Advantage. What is the network and will they cover you outside of your area? Um, they'll accept you with no health questions when you first go on Medicare and also throughout the year there's a fall enrollment period where you can change around that insurance if you want to. They won't deny you unless you're on renal failure or have kidney failure. That's the only time they can. <clears throat> Um, when you sign up for Medicare Advantage, you're locked in for a 12-month period. You sign up in the fall, coming up, let's say, um, you're going to be locked into that for the entire 2015. If you go on Medicare Advantage sometime this year, then you're locked in for the rest of the year, and then you can make a decision about 2015. So it always runs annually, and you're locked into these policies. Unless there's a special reason for you to make a change. Maybe you move from the area. Maybe there's other problems with your Medicare Advantage, so we'll talk about some special enrollment periods coming up. When you're in Medicare Advantage, you're going to be using their card that they send you. Rather than that red, white, and blue card I showed you at the beginning, they'll tell you to put that card away because you're not using your A and B. You're using Medicare Advantage for your health care, and you'll have a card from your insurance company for when you go to the hospital or doctor. <clears throat> So the types of Medicare Advantage in our area, and we are going to take a close look at that, uh, the list of them, uh, but we have Medicare HMOs. You know how they work, health maintenance organizations. There's a network of providers you must use to have coverage. If you go outside of the network, you may not have coverage. Uh, preferred provider organizations, PPOs, kind of work similar to an HMO, um, although sometimes you can go out of the network and have coverage but pay a higher copay or a higher cost. Uh, and there's also in our area private fee-for-service, which um, isn't always with an in a network. Uh, you can sometimes go to any Medicare provider as long as they accept your insurance payment. So um, I'll just mention briefly there are some special needs plans available. I don't have that list for you, but if you know someone with long-term care needs and chronic illnesses, there are special needs Medicare Advantage plans available that can provide a lot of support services for that person and their long-term care needs. Um, but in your folder on the right side, there's a sheet, and I believe it's got a blue heading, and there's like 12 different policies listed on it. Can everybody find that? It's on the right side. There it is right there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, that's the list of the Medicare Advantage plans available in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Everybody find that? 
<clears throat> so this is the hospital and doctor coverage and sometimes drug coverage all in one. These Medicare Advantage plans can include Part D. And this sheet tells you whether or not they do. You'll see the name of the insurance company, the type of plan that they offer, whether it's a PPO or an HMO, what the monthly premium is. I give you an example of co-pays when you go to the doctor, a specialist, or your primary doctor, what your co-pay would be. So it works differently than original Medicare where you have that 20%. They might have a fixed amount or a co-pay that you have to pay when you go to the doctor. There's an example here of one that charges $15 when you go to your regular primary doctor. And if you go to a specialist, you pay $40. So that's why these co-pays or these out-of-pocket costs with the Medicare Advantage are a little different. There isn't a Medicare supplement that you can pick up to pay those costs. That's your coverage, and you have to pay whatever co-pays. Um, it shows you the maximum out-of-pocket. That's not a deductible. That's when your co-pays add up to that amount, your insurance must then pay 100% of your cost to the end of the year. So if you're $15 and you're $40 and whatever you paid for your hospital stays and your nursing home stays, add it up to those amounts, 6700 is the highest out-of-pocket cost that you would incur in Medicare Advantage. Then your plan has to pay 100% of the charges to the end of the year. Okay? Um, so otherwise, the phone numbers are on here. If you want to talk to them, I'm going to show you. You can see at the Medicare website where you can compare these plans, how they work, how they cover your drugs. Uh, otherwise, you can talk to Medicare, and they'll help you also. So the question is, Medicare... Advantage or Original Medicare, which might be right for you. Um, and we kind of put this together a while ago, just some suggestions from the audience about, you know, that's the big question. Should I go to Medicare Advantage or Original Medicare? Well, with Original Medicare by itself, there's no limit on the out-of-pocket cost. You can incur that $1,200 every 60 days in a hospital stay. You have the $300 copay if you're in a hospital stay for one period. Um, However, if you get a Medicare supplement policy, it's going to pay those costs, right? Um, with Original Medicare, you can go to any provider anywhere in the United States who accepts Medicare. And if you're sick and you need treatment, it should pay your bills. Uh, if you're on Medicare, you have to pick a separate drug plan, a Part D plan, or senior care, or if you're with the VA, or if you have retiree coverage, that would be your drug coverage. Uh, with original Medicare and a Medicare supplement, I think I mentioned, you usually stay with the same insurance. You don't make changes throughout the year or at the end of the year for the next year. Usually you stay with the same coverage. And an advantage is that it'll cover you anywhere in the United States. Okay? So Medicare Advantage, the Affordable Care Act does set that maximum out-of-pocket cost, the $6,700. Um, so that's a good thing. You know that each year you would not pay more than that in out-of-pocket costs in Medicare Advantage. You must use your network of providers. Some people like that because having that coordinated care with their network providers, they all know what's going on, they know what medications you're taking. Some people believe that might be an advantage. Um, the Medicare Advantage plans, an, an advantage of them, <laughs> is um, some of them offer extra benefits that aren't in original Medicare. Uh, some offer hearing aid coverages, not covered by Medicare. Some offer vision coverage and some limited dental care. So if you're looking at Medicare Advantage, that might be a reason why you want that coverage because original Medicare doesn't cover those routine cares, glasses or dental. Um, you may have to change plans each year. That's kind of the downside of Medicare Advantage because they renew their contracts on an annual basis with Medicare. Whether that same plan is going to be in our area the next year, we might not know that. And also, coverage in the region or the network, or you end up paying more, or you may not have coverage. So that's kind of the advantages and disadvantages of that type of coverage. <clears throat> I always mention, what if your plan ends? Because I said they renew their contracts on an annual basis with Medicare. And if they decide not to stay in any given area, you have to be notified by October 2nd and then your opportunity, you'll be notified what your options are, which include you can go back to original Medicare, you can get a Medigap policy with guarantee issue, you won't be denied because your plan ended, you lost your insurance, uh, or you can pick a different Medicare Advantage plan and then you have to look again at your drug coverage. So these plans renew on an annual basis. 
Now I will say that in our area, a lot of the plans we've had have been around for a number of years. They've changed up a little bit, their premiums or their co-pays, but for the most part, most of the plans have really stayed very similar in our area. But there does come a time where we've seen that the Medicare Advantage plan just is not going to be available the next year and you would be notified. So you have that period of time at the end of the, in the fall to make a change for the next year. So now we're going to move on to Medicare Part D. And that's drug coverage that's available to Medicare beneficiaries. It's private insurance that you can choose from to cover your prescriptions. And in your folder, there's another sheet. See, I'm giving you all the insurance options right here. Um, the drug plans are listed. There's a green heading across the top. It's two pages. There's about 30 different policies. And this is just drug coverage, prescription drug plans. So to get coverage for prescriptions through Medicare, you have two roads. We already talked about the Medicare Advantage, that you can get a Medicare Advantage plan and include your drug coverage, that all in one. Or you can pick just drug coverage, which is this new list that we just pulled out, prescription drug plan. This type of coverage has been around since 2006. Um, and why that might be important is for someone who's, who's been on Medicare all these years and hasn't had any creditable drug coverage. Uh, there's a time of the year when they can sign up to get a drug plan but they may be penalized for the years they've gone without coverage. So that 2006 date is when you could first get on Medicare drug plan. And why that's important is for seniors who've been without drug coverage since then, who now need drug, a drug, drug plan. Um, so everyone on Medicare can enroll in a Part D plan. There's no income test. There's no asset test. If you're on Medicare and you need drug coverage, you can pick one of these plans for coverage and you won't be denied. Um, there is, however, this program called Extra Help, which I am going to talk about, that helps lower the cost of the Part D plans if you are within certain income and asset limits. We're going to be going through that in a little bit. But otherwise, everybody can sign up for Part D and there's no um, income test. It is voluntary. You don't have to sign up, but we always caution you that if you don't, when you first go on Medicare or shortly thereafter, and you want two years from down the road, you'll be penalized for the number of months you've gone without coverage. So you want to make sure you're covered by prescriptions when you go on Medicare. That's important. So what are your choices? Um, in Wisconsin, in the list that you have, there's actually 28 different plans for 2014. Um, they cover the drugs that are most commonly prescribed to older adults. Pretty common drugs are all covered by these, one of these plans. Some exclusions include over-the-counter drugs, weight loss, and vitamins. They will not be covered by any of these drug plans. They do follow formularies, just like any health insurance. They have lists of covered drugs. So if you're going into a plan, you want to make sure that plan covers your prescriptions. Some of them require prior authorization in order to cover your drug. Some require step therapy. And I always sort of do... A, a little disclaimer that if there's a generic equivalent, they're going to want you to try that first. If your doctor ordered you a brand name, there has to be a medical reason why you have to take that brand name and you, and you have to show that you can't do the generic. That's where the step therapy comes in. And most of the plans require that for those expensive brand names. Um, some of the plans offer enhanced coverage. So maybe they'll cover your brand name a little better than another plan. So that's where selecting the plans based on your prescriptions is important, and we're going to see that. Uh, but most all of the plans have the standard or basic coverage, and this is true whether you're in Medicare Advantage with drug coverage or a standalone drug plan. They may have a front, upfront deductible as, up, as, as high as $310 this year. And then you might have a copay of about 25% after you meet that deductible. Then there's a donut hole. Has everyone heard about the Medicare donut hole that happens? That's when your drug costs reach a certain amount, you end up having to pay more. And I'll show you how that works, and it's not as bad as it was in past years. Um, and there's also a catastrophic level, where once you pay a certain amount out of pocket, then you have better coverage. So I kind of describe it like a roller coaster throughout the year of coverage. That's how these plans are designed. And this is an example. From January through December, how your plan would cover your drugs. 
If it has a deductible, you have to pay that amount first. Then you have about 75% coverage for each prescription or about a 25% copay or less. If it's a generic, you, of course, generics are a lot cheaper. So you stay in that level until the full cost of your drugs, meaning what you paid and what your plan is covering, whatever that full cost is, reaches $2,850. That's when you fall in the donut hole. Okay, so the full cost. And the pharmacy is usually the one that can tell you what the full cost of your drugs are. And you also get a notice in the mail from your Part D plan telling you what the full cost of your drugs are that you've taken so far. So once you reach that 2850 level in the full cost of your drugs, you reach the donut hole. And when I say it's not as painful as it was in past years, that again is because of the Affordable Care Act. They're shrinking the donut hole. So now this year, seniors and people on Medicare pay something less than 50% of their brand names if they fall in the donut hole. In past years, you had to pay 100% of your drugs. Now it's shrinking, so it's down to about less than 50% of your, of your brand names. There's an agreement through the Affordable Care Act with the drug manufacturers who agree that you only pay less than 50% of those expensive brand names. So that'll continue, you know, maybe June, July, August, until you pay out of pocket $4,550 in drug costs. Now that includes all your discounts and all your co-pays and everything you've paid out, out of pocket. If you reach that amount, then you have extra coverage to the end of the year, what they call catastrophic coverage. And you have about 95% coverage. You see your co-pays drop down to a pretty low amount. So it really does work like a, like a roller coaster. So that's how Part D works for everyone. Now, of course, if you qualify for extra help or Medicaid, you'll have better coverage throughout the year than what I showed you there. Um, the extra help lowers these costs throughout the year because people have limited income, and I'm going to show you that program. So just a few fast facts about Part D. Uh, those with higher incomes also pay a higher Part D premium. I mentioned at the beginning, $85,000 for an individual or $170,000 for a couple pay a higher Part B premium. Those folks also now, because it, since 2006, pay a higher Part D premium. And again, it's a sliding scale, and I do have a sheet over here that details that if you want that information. There's 28 different plans to choose from. In Wisconsin, the average premium is about $50. So just a few other things. The premium range, and we're going to take a close look at them, uh, is the lowest cost Part D plan in Wisconsin is $12.90 a month. The highest premium is 137 So which one you're going to pick really is probably based on your medications. That's the best way to figure out which one works for you. So um, with the Part D, just like the Medicare Advantage, because they renew their contracts on an annual basis, you may need to change your Part D plan every year. And I always tell people it does pay to compare. It pays to compare plans each year because they change their formularies. They change their premiums. They change their out-of-pocket costs, their deductibles and co-pays. So, um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is a scan of what you have in your hand of the Medicare drug plans. Um, they're in alphabetical order. It tells you the phone number to call. You can talk to them. It tells you what the monthly premium is. You'll see this premium with, LI, with full LIS. That's the extra help program, or it's also called low-income subsidy. So those plans offer a lower premium for people who, who qualify for extra help. And um, it saves their out-of-pocket costs. Tells you if they have an annual deductible or not. Tells you if they cover any brand names in the gap or the donut hole, if they're an enhanced plan. So this is a pretty good overview of what's available. So how do you choose a drug plan? Well, you can choose it by premium, but it's recommended that if you take a lot of prescriptions, you run this plan finder either by talking to Medicare on the phone or if you have a computer or someone who can help you on computer, and there are helpers available in our area, um, that you, you use your list of prescriptions with the dosage to find the plan that's going to save you the most. Each one of these drug plans negotiate their own rates with the drug manufacturers. So one of your expensive drugs might be cheaper with one plan than it is with another, and that's where that plan finder kind of scans them all for you. And I'll show you how it works. It's really a pretty clever tool. But what you're going to do is pick a plan that saves you the most 
for the year on your particular prescriptions. That's the whole idea. And make sure it covers the medications you take. You'll be able to determine that. So when can you enroll in Part C and D? I mentioned at the beginning when you can get A and B you ha and C and D, you have your initial enrollment period, right? When you first turn 65, that's when you can make all your choices. You have an annual enrollment period. Sometimes it's called the annual election period, and that runs from October 15th to December 7th of each year. And that's when individuals can sign up for Part D or Medicare Advantage Part C, or they can change their plans if they want to for the next January. Uh, if you're notified that your plan is ending, you have this period of time to shop around and see what you want to do for next year. Okay, so that comes up every fall. There's special enrollment periods when you can change your insurance, your drug plans or your health, Medicare Advantage plans. Um, say you lost your other insurance, you have an, a, a special election period to get into a drug plan or a health plan. Um, if you move away from the area, maybe your drug plan or your Medicare Advantage plan is only covering you in this area and you move to Texas, then you'll have 63 days to shop for a plan that's available down there. Okay, so that's a special enrollment period. Uh, those special enrollment periods. If you gain other creditable coverage, maybe your spouse goes back to work and you have health insurance. That's a special enrollment. You can get out of it. There's all kinds of them. And they keep adding more special enrollment periods. I can hardly keep up with it. But I want to mention the trial period because Medicare Advantage is kind of a unique way to get your health coverage, right, with this network of providers. And so they give you an opportunity. If this is the first time you've ever signed up for any kind of HMO or PPO and you're dissatisfied, it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. Maybe your doctor isn't in the network and you didn't realize. If it's the first time you've ever signed up for any kind of coverage like that, there's also a disenrollment period uh, through February 14th, Valentine's Day, where you can drop your Medicare Advantage plan and goes back to original Medicare if you've made a mistake or you realize that it wasn't what you wanted. Okay, so they give you a little bit of leeway, especially with the Medicare Advantage plans. Oh, and here's a new one, well, fairly new, a couple years. There's a five-star plan enrollment. Anytime during the year, if you find a, a plan that's rated with five stars or more, you can switch to that plan during the year. Now, I'll show you on the Medicare website where the plans are rated, and also in the Medicare handbook, it tells you how they're rated. Um, and it's consumer satisfaction. Medicare rates these plans. So that's about what I wanted to say about Medicare um, Part D and how, how to enroll. Once you kind of did that comparison and you decide which plan you want, you can enroll online by clicking an enrollment button. You can call Medicare and they'll enroll you over the phone. Um, if you contact the plan directly, they might have an agent come and help you or send you a paper application. Sometimes they'll take your application over the phone. So you pick which plan is right for you, and then you enroll any one of those ways. If you have an insurance agent that you work with, they can also take your application. Okay. Before you enroll in a Medicare drug plan, see if you qualify for extra help. That's an important program. And what we're going to move into now is these benefits that help with health care costs, a lot of it, and also appeal rights. Um, this is the program, and there is a sheet in your folder that talks about help with health care costs. But then you also have a copy of this on the slide. But this is the program that helps lower the cost of the drug plans under Part D. And it's based on something called, you might have heard, the federal poverty level. That's a measure of poverty that the federal government set up way back in the 60s. Um, so right here, this amount for an individual, and this is monthly income. This is 100% of poverty right here. If your income is this low as an individual or this low as a couple, you can get this much help for your prescriptions. No monthly premium and very low co-pays. If your income is at this level, and when we're talking about income, that's what you live on each month, your Social Security, your pension. Assets are another thing that's looked at in this program. Assets include savings, investments, money in the bank, CDs, all that. Uh, if your assets are less than these amounts as an individual or a couple and your income is less than this, that's how much help you can get with your prescriptions in, the, in this program. Uh, it goes up to as high as 150% of poverty. 
And so for an individual, that's about $1,458 a month income. For a couple, about $1,900. And a somewhat higher asset level. Assets do not include your home or your car, your personal possessions. It's money that you have socked away somewhere. Okay? To apply for this program, you do that through the Social Security office. That's the only thing they'll tell you about Part D. Otherwise, they send you to the Aging and Disability Resource Center. But they should help you apply for extra help if you want to. There's also an online application at the Social Security website, or you can call the 800 number. Now, if you qualify for any kind of Medicaid benefit at some point, you will automatically get extra help. They kind of come together. So your drug costs will go way down if you qualify for Medicaid and you're on Medicare also. But I want to mention your appeal rights, because if you're denied Medicare benefits or you have a grievance about your insurance or you're, you're dissatisfied, contact your benefit specialist. That's who we are at the Aging and Disability Resource Center. Because we have, um, we have a lot of training in these appeals, and this is what we help with when there's a problem with coverage. You're denied your nursing home benefits. You're denied your hospital benefits. You have a grievance with your drug plan. We know how to help with that kind of process. So just keep in mind where to go if you're denied Medicare benefits. You do have to watch timelines. When you get those Medicare summary notices that I mentioned at the beginning, when you receive any medical services, it'll tell you how many days you have to appeal. And it's approximately about 120 days from when you get that notice. OK, so something to watch for. So to kind of put it all in perspective for you, how do you get your health care? Or how do you want to get your health care if you're just coming up to Medicare eligibility? You can have Part A and B, which is your hospital and medical insurance, right? You would pay out of pocket for any deductibles. Remember the $1,216 and the $147. If you want to get a Medicare supplement or Medigap policy, you can, they go together. That'll help pay those deductibles and co-pays. If you have retiree insurance from your company as secondary to Medicare, you're fine. You should be good. Um, or do you want Medicare Advantage or Part C to get your health coverage? That's what you get to decide. That's your hospital doctor and sometimes drug coverage all in one. Um, you have a lower monthly cost because, as I mentioned, the Medicare Advantage plans can be from zero additional monthly premium. You do still pay the Part B, but otherwise zero additional monthly premium, and then you pay whatever co-pays they design. Okay? So with the Medicare, Medicare supplement, you have a higher monthly premium. You're going to pay for that insurance to cover those bills. With the Medicare Advantage, you might decide that's how you want to get your health care. You know you have a lower monthly cost probably. You have your network of providers you want to stay with, but you're going to pay those co-pays. So you get to decide. And then you'll see, where am I going to get my drug coverage? Do I need a Part D plan or senior care, which we're still about to talk about? Um, or does my Medicare Advantage plan include drug coverage? OK, so does that kind of help you see how this all works, your options? It's your decision. It's all health care. You just decide where to take the bigger bite. Pay the premium and have your bills paid, or go with Medicare Advantage and know that you're going to expend those out-of-pocket costs. OK? And also, if you have computer, these are a lot of good websites that you can want to visit. Uh, the Wisconsin of the Commissioner of Insurance has those Medicare supplements published. So we're hoping soon the 2014 book will be available. A lot of good information on what's covered by Medicare at this website, and this is the Medicare.gov. Here's all the phone numbers, where to call for help from here. There's state helplines that are available. I have the number of the... Uh, Benefit Specialist at the Aging and Disability Resource Center. So this is where you can call for help from here. So I appreciate your coming. If you have more questions, you can certainly call us at the Aging and Disability Resource Center. Uh, please fill out your surveys. And the other information, senior care applications, information about Medicare supplement policies, all that's here. So thank you.